Hi, thanks for joining me again. Hope everyone's well. I'm going to do a quicker video today after the last extravaganza and just put up a chart, do a little bit of random chat about certain principles and then stop. Okay, this is BEN, Bendigo Bank. It doesn't really matter which chart we use. I've just pulled this one up, had a quick look at it and thought we can do something with it for a brief video. Now, we'll look at this bar to start with. Firstly, some basics. This is obviously the close. This is the high. The high for me represents resistance for the period. This is a weekly chart, looking up here. And um, this is where there was resistance. Resistance is selling pressure. This is where enough selling pressure came in to overcome the buyers and make that the high for the week. And this is the low for the week. And this represents support. Support is buying. Um, there was enough buyers down here that were supporting the stock, supporting price down here um, to overcome the sellers and push price up. So this was your resistance high. This is your support at the low. Okay, uh, remove all that. The next bar is interesting as well because um, it gapped down from the previous close. Um, now, we look at a bar and say this is its traded range. This is where price actually traded for the week in this case. Um, so from here to here is this bar's traded range, but its true range. Um, also includes the gap. So its true range looks more like this. That's the true range of the bar. There's only a slight difference, but um, in some cases it makes a difference and I'll bring it up from time to time. So when I say the true range of a bar, it's always from the previous close from here, even though I've already marked, we can't see now, but this is where the traded range began and went down. Similarly, over here, this bar here was an up bar and this was the low of the traded range, but the previous close is here. So this bar, its true range is more like this. That shows the true range of the bar. Okay. Now, when we look at an individual bar, we said that support comes in at its low down here. Now, when price breaks below that support, it's just like when price breaks below a certain level. Uh, if we come over here and we say here is an important level and price breaks below it here. Now, we're talking about it in terms of um, waves or trends here. On an individual basis, it's more a minor break, but whenever you see a single bar break below another bar or break above another bar, um, it's very similar in the way you can think about it as when an, an actual level is broken. So um, as we go along, you'll see what I mean. In this case, there's actually two levels here. There's the low of the individual bar, if I draw a quick wave on this from here, you see what I mean. This bar here was the low, the wave low, um, as price moves in waves like this. Here is the one I marked before. No, so not only was this bar's low broken, um, but the low of the range was broken by this nasty looking down bar. Now, always want to look and see what happens in subsequently. The high volume here was just uh, a whole lot of selling pressure came in 
possibly on news, whether it was stock specific news or um, across the market broadly, whatever, for whatever reason, it sold off. Usually it doesn't matter what the reason is. Now, I'd like to mark a level down here and try to find out what might be going on. Um, I would start off with the, the first bar in the range. Often that's the bar that makes the most sense. Here's the volume down here. But um, for my likings, it's not really saying too much. So we'll, we'll look further on. Now, the next bar is on lower volume, so I'm not very interested. The next one is on an increase in volume, but the first one was a bit higher. You move along, this one's got too long a tail. I don't really like that one too much. I'll mark it if I have to, or if it makes sense, but I don't really like that one. Now this one is the most recent. It's on above average volume. This is the one I'd probably choose if it makes some sense with the trading. Now, if you imagine that all of this trading wasn't here and price just broke down, let's just clear that off. Price just broke down. Below this bar's low, and the next bar was up. So we've had a down bar, next bar's up. So you have to say that um, the market found some support. We don't know how much, but you can see the high of this bar was found resistance at the low of this bar. So you're probably in the right spot um, here. And then this bar, as it came down on increased volume, breaking below the lows of the previous two bars, also found its resistance at this level. So I like this level as we go. Uh, you see the next bar traded, let's clear it again. Next bar traded inside the previous bar's range, but it didn't go down any further. So we've got this level here marked. There was some support here, as there was some support here as well. So um, now we're wondering if there might be um, some sort of accumulation taking place. Now notice this bar has also traded inside the previous bar, which traded inside the previous bar. There's um, some support coming in. If you did look down the bottom here, volume is actually dropping. So uh, selling pressure in this case is dropping. Um, you see this down bar didn't respond. Um, it's still inside this bar and inside this bar and supply dropped further, um, that's corresponding to that volume there. And we see a little bit of support coming here just by the shape of the bar, it's dipped lower, it's rejected going any further, and it's closed back within the range of the previous bar. And you can see price is really going sideways now. Price continued higher, which is giving you some confirmation of a little bit of support we've seen. We're always looking for confirmation using the next bar each time to support the story you're coming up with. If you're not getting confirmation, especially on a weekly chart like this, you need to look at changing the story, changing the way you're interpreting the chart. Um, we had a down bar then on fairly modest volume. And you'd be wondering then if price is going to continue lower. It's a threatening bar. It's um, probably closed below the low of the previous bar, but then the next bar was up. So here's your confirmation that uh, price has found some support right through here, because this, let's have a look, go back. This threatening bar, and possibly this one too, didn't find lower lows afterwards. Instead, price was up in both cases. Now, and I suppose you'd say in this one too, price was up each time. This is like uh, when you see bullish absorption, you get threatening down bars that look like they might be further downside, but instead price closes higher the next day or it doesn't follow through. Interestingly, price on this bar closes right at this resistance line that we marked. So there was resistance there, and then price accelerates through. Now you can see price accelerated away from there. But um, before we get to that, just notice just here price stalled out a little bit. And interestingly, it corresponds with this low 
that we originally marked when we first started. Um, this was like a wave low. It was the wave. And um, that made it a significant level. We marked those significant levels. Now price has made a little gap to go over that line, over that level of resistance. This is where the market often does things like this in an effort to encourage people to hold on to stock and not sell. So um, let's just imagine you were a buyer in here and then price broke down below the low of this low and then you were and you didn't sell, you were effectively trapped into a losing position all the way through here, all the way through here, and all the way across here, and all the way up to here, you've been in a losing position. This is a weekly chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen weeks, you would have been underwater. You'd be saying to yourself, well, as soon as price comes back, I'm out for break even. And that's what happens at levels like this. Um, so in a, to encourage people who have been in a losing position to hold on and not sell, because that selling pressure makes it more difficult to keep price moving higher. Little gaps over a significant level like that will often make people feel as though they might actually make some money from that position in the end after all that waiting. Um, so you see little gaps like that. It's very common. Understanding why they occur is important. Now, um, the mid-bar close here shows that uh, some selling pressure did come in from this area here. It also probably shows that there was some selling pressure from the previous high right over here. This is a previous high over here. There's obviously going to be some supply that was um, waiting in there, trapped stale supply, what people wanting to sell after price has been below their level for a long time. That's probably why price failed through here because of the, um, the selling pressure that it received over here. So you can see price then gaps up, accelerates higher here and closes back at the resistance line, the expected resistance line from way over there. But it's strong enough and perhaps enough time's gone by uh, remembering the longer price is in a losing position down here like this, uh, people who are trapped over here may well just take loss and say, oh, I'm just going to get out. As time goes on, there's less and less people or less and less holders stuck in areas like this. So sufficient time has gone past, the resistance has reduced enough for um, a couple of bars to get through the resistance and it accelerates higher. Now um, all the spreads start to narrow here, it's always a little bit of a concern. Yes, it's a consolidation period after a, a high rise. Um, you've got sort of like a bull flag Forming. A bull flag is generally a form of consolidation. Bull flag is like um, classic technical analysis. In this case, you've probably had a period of moderate accumulation here, a, a widespread down bar, and then a sideways period with a series of threatening down bars that didn't see any downside follow through, and they were all constrained by this previous resistance line. This was likely some sort of minor or moderate accumulation. You have to also wonder whether this was a period where there was some profit taking taken. Uh, for instance, looking at this bar here, let's mark some of those lines back. So you can see where we were. This was above average volume and um, prices closed well off its high of the week, there was a bit of selling in that bar. Um, and then the next bar has broken below its low on still fairly reasonable volume. Now, I'm not sure that this bar was really anticipated by the market. This bar was when uh, the US raised their tariffs against Chinese imports and then China devalued their currency in response. I'm not really sure that was anticipated by the market. But um, what is interesting um, 
remember that this bar's uh, true range low is here. What is interesting is that this big down bar, widespread down bar, um, found support at these important levels. It's uh, sort of to be expected that would be some increased support there. Whether it would be enough to hold is always the question. But at this point, with one day in the week to go, um, and a little bit of support and demand arriving overseas and in our local market, it looks like this level will hold, at least for now. Look for confirmation next bar as usual and, um, and see how that goes. Okay, I'm going to stop now. Thanks for joining me again and um, hope that was interesting and I'll see you later. See ya.